All right, how's it going, y'all? So this is going to be a very different video than you're used to watching on this channel. And it is basically five really great features that Unify has added into the Dream Machines in the past one or two years. Really kind of stuff that was just not there since I got it that I think have added major functionality to these devices. I bought my Dream Machine actually probably about three years ago now. And these are all real quality of life updates that I think a lot of people will find useful and I think have gotten a lot better. And if you're not constantly looking into Unify stuff, these are great things to just look at and see if you may find useful that might not have been there when you first set up your device. And the first and something that actually made this device significantly more useful for me when I'm deploying with clients is actually one of the more simple things and I wish I would add more features to and that is local DNS records. And so what local DNS records are is it's very simple and it's not fully fleshed out. It's not full local DNS that you can set up, but it allows you to set up DNS records for devices without having to run your own DNS server. And it is incredibly easy to use. All you do is you come to a local device, you click on it, and you go ahead and assign it a fixed IP address first and then you add it as a local DNS record. So we're gonna call it, you can choose realistically any domain you want to do. I would highly recommend if you own your own domain, add in a additional one and use that just so you never have any trouble loading your own website or anything. But basically, anytime you type nas1.demo.spacerex.co, it'll go ahead and use that. And then to use this, all you need to do is make sure that all your computers are using the UDM as the actual DNS server, which is actually the default unless you've configured it otherwise. So I'm just gonna set that now because I actually have my own ones that I'm running. And now when I go to nas1.demo.spacerex.co, boom, I am just taken straight into, well, it's actually called NAS2. I'm taken straight into that without running a DNS server. I use this all the time with clients because it means that I can really easily start setting up DNS records for people who do not have a complex system. You can always create your own DNS server really easily, but the problem with that is if it's your only one, if you've only got one DNS server and the DNS server goes down, your internet effectively goes down. If your UDM is down, you know, you don't have internet anyway. So that's why it's great to put a DNS server on a router. I do wish they would enable something called conditional forwarding where you could say, okay, send anybody who is under spacerex.co to this other DNS server and use that. And that way you only have to use one. But I think this is a very useful feature that really gets like 80% of the way there. There's a lot of little things I love to do with DNS that you can't do with this, such as having C names and stuff like that. But this gets you there where it's very easy to spin up and just start using. So that was number one. Now, number two is actually a bit of a half-baked feature that they've not really finished up yet, but is still super useful and really easy to get up and running, and that is Teleport. So Teleport is just a really easy way to build a VPN server that you can just create a invite link and use your iOS or Android device to connect on into the local network, all without having to worry about a bunch of different settings and configurations and things like that. It can even work behind CGNAT in a lot of cases, which is great. It's a really easy way to just generate a quick link and be able to have it work. The reason I say it's half-baked is they don't have a Windows or a Mac client. They do have a bit of a Mac client. So macOS, at least anything that's running Apple Silicon, is actually able to install iOS apps so you actually can install the iOS version of Unify Wi-Fi Man on your Mac and actually use that to get it to work. So it's technically there. They still have not released the Windows app and there's not a real Mac OS app, even though it should be pretty easy, but it does seem like installed, but it's a super useful feature to have if you only have a Unify device and you don't want to spend all the time configuring all your different settings and things like that. Instead, this just kind of works. You set it and you forget it and you're able to connect on in securely very easily. Honestly, this is really great because it takes so much out of the tuning work that is involved whenever you're setting up your own VPN server. And that actually brings us to number three, and that is having an open VPN server and a WireGuard VPN server all now on the Unify itself. 
Previously, when I actually started out with this, they only had the ability to have for the Road Warrior client setup where you have your phone or computer hook up to the VPN. They only had L2TP over IPsec, which sucks. L2TP over IPsec is just not a great protocol. Cisco has absolutely butchered it. And since they own it, they told Windows, hey, by the way, you're implementing it wrong and effectively broke the open source version for tons of people. It's slow, it disconnects. I hate L2TP over IPsec, it drives me crazy. But they've gone in and created OpenVPN and WireGuard options that are just so easy to set up. So you can just super easily start spinning up these servers. Though Unify, I wish you would allow us to have multiple servers. So you can see, because I've already got an OpenVPN server running, I can't have more OpenVPN servers. I wish you'd be able to have actually a few because there's no technical limitation why you can't have multiple open VPN servers running. And there are genuine use cases for having completely separate servers with completely separate subnets hooked up. I actually do that for client hookups. And so it would be great if you could actually have multiple open VPN servers or multiple WireGuard servers on here. But you can see it's just very easy to go and actually build these things. And it takes so much of the guesswork out of this. WireGuard is great for super fast speed, but does not have necessarily the best interface and is a little bit clunky for whenever you're installing it on a device. OpenVPN is a little bit slower than WireGuard, but it's got that tried and true. There's all the configuration in the world you need there. And there's got a great app for Mac, Windows, Linux, iOS, Android. Everything has a very professional looking app and it is username, password authentication. And so you can have multiple people connecting on in. You can cut up to a radius server. You can do a bunch of stuff like that. And so it really depends on which one's right for you. I normally end up deploying OpenVPN to most clients just because we can take the speed hit most of the time. It's all about stability and really ease of use for the end user. So that is number three. Having easy to use VPN servers right out of the box is a huge selling point. The one thing I really wish they would add in is kind of follow Synology's path and add in an optional DDNS. So have a unify.u instead of a Synology.me, whatever, that you could effectively have on here without having to pay for your own domain and everything like that. A really easy way to just set up DDNS and that would make these Unify VPN servers that much more usable for people who have a dynamic IP address. Now I will say as much as their marketing says, hey, Unify, hardware as a service, trying to sell the fact that you buy the hardware and you just don't have to pay for any subscription fees. They do also very much promote UID or Unify access essentially. This allows you to have all of your employees have super easy connection into the building as well as site site VPNs and just really easy configuration and login for things like that at $5 per user per month. And so that is one reason why they may make it a little bit harder, not as easy right out of the box to set up their own VPN server, because quite frankly, that's one of the largest selling points to UID is the really easy VPN configuration and connection, as well as the fact that it gives you door access and all those other things. So that is just one thing that they definitely make money by not making it perfectly easy to have your own DDNS on here. You have to basically get your own domain and then you can add DDNS. All right, so that was number three. Two and three were our VPN options in. Now for number four, this is actually super useful for debugging setups, and that is the triggers. The triggers are so nice now that you can go in here and you can go into your triggers and you can see why stuff was blocked from what. So when you're trying to figure out what rules things were being blocked from, you can come in here and you can see why things were being blocked. This makes debugging firewall rules so easy because you can start to see what's going on. Then if you're also seeing a bunch of stuff getting blocked randomly, you can start investigating, hey, what's going on here? And it kind of really helps with that kind of stuff. I am very happy they finally added this in here and it has made debugging network setups that much easier because you can see a super easy log. This was blocked for this for this reason. And that just means you don't have to spend hours pausing firewall rules, resuming firewall rules, trying to see what is stopping traffic left and right. This has just made it so easy for me. You can just click on something, you can see the device, you can see what it was trying to connect to, and you can see which firewall rule actually blocked it. Super easy, really, really useful to have. This has actually made my consulting life 
significantly easier because you want to have strict firewall rules and having this allows you to have them because you're not constantly like, all right, let's just open up further so we don't run into these issues anymore. And as a 4.5, I also want to shout out the rest of these logs right here. The admin activity is super nice. I've got it set up where I've got push notifications to my phone every time I sign into the Unify portal. We can see right here, boom, do not disturb, Unify is on there. So I get a notification every time I log into this. And it's just really helpful to know, yeah, that was me. And if I ever am like, huh, that wasn't me, now we know, now we can start figuring out what goes on. So it's really nice to have those little notifications and things like that, that you can opt in with. That's 4.5. Now for number five, it is the rules and routes that has just been so easy. So if you go into your traffic management, this right here is phenomenally easy to set up for your average person. I really like Unify because it allows me to set this up for a client and then the client actually be able to manage it themselves. They don't have to call me every single time they need the smallest thing done. It really enables the client to be able to have true ownership over their own technology and then anything they need me to do, I can do. But routes and rules makes it so easy to set it up. Rules are by far the best. So rules allow you to either block or even just have a speed limit for apps and things like that. So you can slow people down to like one megabyte per second for specific apps. And that way, people will get back to work who are on social media or whatever. You can also say, all right, if you're spending too much time in there, it keeps your bandwidth from being overworked and you can really set up options like that. You can set this up so easily. There are these basic app groups that are already set up. So you can just say, all right, I'm gonna slow all social network down to one megabyte per second for all devices or all subnets or whatever. This is just so easy to set up that real people can do it very easily. You can also block social media without having all these complex setups and having to pay for a subscription service to X, Y, and Z, Zizel thing. Instead, you just get everything all built in for that. And this is huge because I truly believe that this enables people who are not all the time looking at Unify videos and learning all this stuff to be able to effectively manage their own systems. I think this is a huge thing. And then the routes, was also just really easy for if you're working between two lands, between two WANs, you can actually be routing specific traffic through one or the other. It's not nearly as great because it's not nearly as used as often, but these two things just make it so easy to set this stuff on up. Overall, really, really appreciate this. And it just makes sense. All right, well, that's it for my list. I'd love to hear from you what you think the best recently added features are just for regular people and businesses who don't need these incredibly complex setups. Put those down in the comments below. And if you want to hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. All right, have a good one. Bye.